The Synchrodyne Expand takes the complexity of the original Synchrodyne and ramps it up by quite a bit. Uh, it has its own similar setup to the Synchrodyne, uh, but it also expands, as the name would suggest, upon the functionality of the original Synchrodyne. So what I did first here is I drew up a little guide to the sections of the Synchrodyne. So the original Synchrodyne is a standalone module, and we talked about the signal flow of that in the previous video. The Synchrodyne Expand is also a standalone module, uh, which has a section in red here which sort of behaves on its own. At the same time, it adds functionality to the original Synchrodyne, and it also uh, links the two together. The areas in blue are outputs or inputs that directly relate to the Synchrodyne, uh, but only if you have the expand. These two inputs offer uh, CV control over these two parameters, in which case these knobs become attenuators for the incoming CV. But the damping CV controls the damping knob and the track speed controls the track speed knob. I don't know why they're flipped uh, when they move to this one or that one, but there's a couple things I'm not quite sure why they are the way they are. The outputs for the Synchronine, the original Synchronine, are also down here. So here we've got a dedicated VCA output and wave folder output, and those relate back to the VCA and the wave folder on the original Synchronine. Uh, you have a couple of special other filter outputs which tie together the two-pole and the four-pole output. Uh, well, specifically in this one. Um, and we'll go over that. The notch outputs uh, are related to the first one. But this whole blue section, um, not sure why it wasn't over here next to the PLL inputs. I'm guessing it's just because of circuit board layout or whatever, but the important thing to know is this is not related necessarily to the Synchrodyne Expand. These, this section and this section uh, relate to the PLL. Now, the purple section up here I made a little bit different because that means that the Synchrodyne is directly impacting what goes into the, the original Synchrodyne. So these controls up here in purple will uh, affect what happens over here uh, in the Synchrodyne. The layout of the original Synchrodyne, as I pointed out in the previous video, is pretty straightforward. The VCO is in this section, it drives the PLL, the PLL drives the filter. Uh, the Synchrodyne Expand isn't laid out quite the same. The VCO sort of goes up through in here, uh, and then this goes into the pulse width modulation, which goes into the PLL over here, which goes back around to the filter here, but not before passing through the compressor here. So if that's not clear as mud, I don't know what is. So for the VCO, you've got uh, your standard controls here. You've got exponential and linear FM inputs. Uh, in this case, you don't have attenuverters or anything there. You've got your hard sync input. Pulse width modulation, because on this one, the uh, square wave output has uh, PD PWM, unlike the first Synchrodyne. Uh, you got one volt per octave input. You've got your saw output, your pulse width modulation output, uh, and so forth. The coarse and fine controls are up here. And so these are going to be the things that are directly related to the uh, VCO. So next, and I can't remember what I use, what color did I use in the previous one? No, oh, I'm already off, fine. Whatever, we'll go to red. So the PLL down here, You've got your same tracking controls here. Let's make that a little bit better. Um, you've got your clock multiplier like you do on the original. And you've got some interesting inputs and outputs here. Uh, the PLL input, which is now labeled PLL in instead of clock in, so that's confusing. The PLL output is here. There's a special PLL output, which I really, really like, which we're going to talk about the PLL triangle output. Um, and then you've got some controls up here for the PLL. Um, and so these, this area is sort of related to the PLL in red. The filter, which I'll do in purple, is actually fairly straightforward. It's down here. Um, it has some of its own dedicated inputs, uh, or has multiple inputs. But this, unlike the original Synchrodyne, which is multi-mode, it has all sorts of notch outputs, um, different responses. This is just a four-pole 
output with a, a clipping circuit or a distortion circuit. So the original one added frequency content using a wave folder. Uh, the filter on the second Synchronine adds it using uh, a distortion. So we've got a resonance. Uh, this will also self-oscillate. And again, these are all tied to each other much in the same way that the original Synchronine was. So same thing, VCO through the PLL into the filter. Okay. Now, in addition to that, we also have, make this green, I guess, make this green. We also have, whoops, we also have a compressor. So the compressor is there because some of the signals can get a little out of hand uh, relative to the others. Uh, but this we'll talk about in the, uh, the flow chart, uh, which is very helpful. But this uh, can be used by itself. There is a compressor in, there's a compressor out, but this is a dedicated uh, compressor with uh, compression level, uh, attack and uh, decay controls, and it also has um, control over what the sidechain circuit is detecting. So that's the layout of the Synchrodyne Expand. It's a little hairier than the original Synchrodyne, uh, but with a little bit of time and patience, we can make just as much sense of it. And we'll get to see some of the really cool stuff that this module can do.